Listen, what I got to say to you tonight, I, I just have to admit, it, it's going to cause you to go back to your bunk, man, and you're just going to have to think tonight. Because I came to mess with your head tonight. I came to just get all up inside of here. And just when I leave here, I want you meditating on this word long after I am gone because I am sent here from the Father to talk to his sons. And so I'm here to give you a message from your daddy tonight. And so I'm just a brother telling you what, the, what, what our Father said. So I want you to receive it. And I know a lot of you don't have Bibles in here, but remember these, and I'm probably going to quote the Scripture two or three times while I'm preaching so I can make sure that when you go back, you look it up. And so I want to start in Luke chapter number 15. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. It's on the prodigal son. And there's something in it that I want to just share with you because I think you can relate to it. And I think it's going to speak to your heart tonight. Luke 15, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. I'm not going to read them all. But go back and look up Luke chapter 15, verses number 11 through 32. Once again, that's Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. And it says, a certain man had two sons. The younger of him said, Father, give me the portion that belongs to me. In other words, he had an inheritance and he said, I want my stuff. And after many days, the younger gathered all together his stuff and took his journey into a far country and there wasted all of his inheritance with prodigal living. Or some verses say riotous living. It just simply means wasteful living. That he did things that were wasteful with his life and with his possessions. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed the swine. He would have gladly filled his stomach with a husk that the swine ate and no man gave to him. But here's your verse. But when he came to himself. But when he came to himself. But when he came to himself. He said, I'm getting up out of here and I'm headed back home where I belong. When he came to him. I want to talk from this subject, and I want you to just remember this when you go back in and meditate tonight. Who am I? Who am I? And some of you are like, well, I know who I am. No, no, no. I didn't ask you your name. I didn't ask you if you knew your name I ask you, do you know who you are? Because evidently, for this young man to come to himself must mean he had not been himself. So that means he was living a lie outside of the true person that he was born to be. And so the scripture declares that while he was doing his thing out there, wasting his life, he was doing all of that, watch this, outside of himself. Which means he was living a lie. And so now for you to understand this, let me break it down to you because 
You'll find the scripture in Matthew chapter number 16, Matthew 16, Matthew 16. When Jesus comes to his disciples and he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they say, some say you're, you're Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus looked at him and said, but who do you say that I am? Peter got revelation from God and Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, he says, you're not just Mary's baby. You're not just Joseph's son. You are actually the offspring of God. You came from God. Jesus looked at him and said, flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven, had to reveal this to you. In other words, he had been walking with them for three years and they didn't even know who he really was because his identity was hidden in God. And so God, even though Jesus was walking the earth, nobody really knew who he was except Peter when he got the revelation that you are the son of the living God. But now what happens next is what I really came to preach to you about because the moment Peter said, you're not just Jesus of Nazareth, you're, you're not just Mary's boy or Joseph's boy, you're the son of the living God. Jesus turned around and looked at him and said, and thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What am I trying to tell you? That when Jesus said, since the Father gave you a revelation of who I am, it is my assignment to give you a revelation of who you are. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? And so, and so, because until Jesus told him that, he thought his name was Simon. But then Jesus introduces him to another side of himself and says, you're not Simon, you're Peter. Now, the reason you have to understand this is because names in the Bible carry character, which means you name something according to its character. And so when he was born, he was named Simon, which means sand. It means shifting. It means unstable. But that's what his name was until he met Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, with your unstable self, I see a rock in you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? He, he said, oh, he said, no matter how shaky you been, he said, you blow like the wind. You're like a reed. But he says, your true identity is that you are a rock. My God which means it is possible to live life outside of your identity. Say this after me, men, say identity. Yes, do you know who you are? Or have you been sold a lie, believed a lie, therefore lived a lie? Because you didn't know your true identity. Can I tell you men that the reason you have to know the Lord Jesus Christ is not for religion? The reason you have to get to know him is because he's the only one that knows you. And without him, you can never find the true identity of what you were created to be. Because he alone knows because he made you. And so no matter what you have done, no matter how unstable you have been, the Lord sent me in here tonight to tell you he knows your true identity. The question is, do you know? Now don't get mad at me because I'm going to answer that rhetorical question for you. Because two ways to answer that question 
If I ask you, do you know who you are? There ain't but two ways you can answer it. Let me answer it for you. You can say, number one, I do now. Or number two, no, I don't. <laughs> because the fact that you are in here tonight means somewhere you had to lose yourself. The fact that I'm in here talking to you tells me somewhere either you never knew your identity or you lost your identity because God does not make inmates. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. God, God does not make criminals. No, no, no. Nothing comes from God lawless. And so what the enemy did for your life is he tried to shroud you from your identity. Because once you get your identity from God, you begin to live like you know who you are. And I'm telling you, once you find out who you are, Satan has no chance at you. He has to catch you before you find yourself. 